Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Thank you for joining me. I'm Joseph F. Ulsis, Addiction Master on Twitter. Today I want to discuss something I think is very important. I call it a foundation for wellness. In a way, it's just a exercise for the mind. I think too many times today we put a stigma on mental health. So we can go to the gym, work out our bodies, and everybody thinks that's cool. But when it comes to mental health and exercising the mind, I think we could use a little more information out there, some more tools, and that's what I hope I'll be able to do today. So I start with a breathing exercise. I think you can call it a power breath. If you look online, and it's basically taking a slow, deep breath in through your nose, about three to five seconds with a slight pause, and then letting it out through your mouth slower, about five to eight seconds. And that's basically it. It is a quick, easy tool or reminder Nothing I say is going to be totally unique. Um, don't have a deg degrees or anything. But I cobbled together these exercises as I've been through my own struggles. And they seem to work and they help the friends and family who are at least acceptable to the idea and listen and practice it. So like with everything, some people it'll be easier. Some people it might not work. We're all wired a little different. So that's what I'll refer to when I say breathe, or if I mention breath. The power breath in through the nose, out through the mouth slower, then you took it in. Once you get that, you can look at it as a exercise to do as many times as a day as possible. This is not about quality, it's more about quantity training your body, building it up over time as a habit. I think there's a meme going around, or a meme or some doctor about how it takes 400 repetitions to create a synapse, but only around 12 if you do it having fun or playing games. In a way, in a little bit I'll show you how you'll use it on yourself with another tool we'll add to it. And like with anything, you take what you can from it, and hopefully you'll be able to use it. So we look at it as waking up in the morning, you take a breath. Before you brush your teeth, before you greet your pet, before you wake up your kids. Before you get in the car, before you get stuck in traffic. Before you open the door to work. Before you open the door to a therapist, before you answer the phone. As many times as a day you can remember. This will become a habit you won't recognize. It'll be instant and it'll eventually, hopefully for some people, be a stopgap or a buffer. So you use this to find your balance, your focus, your calm. And you want to recognize the stress leaving your body on the outbreath, a relaxation in your body preparing to be relaxed and calm. Once you get that down and you just keep practicing it, like I said, it's important to do it as much as you can. Eventually, you're not gonna have to remember to do it. It's gonna be instinctive. You might almost get into a car accident and realize, I didn't panic, or a, someone surprises you, or a bad phone call, bad news. So, this could be something to prevent it or at least let you know. And when you train yourself in this, it could help you in the way you will further fall into a, uh, an outburst or an emotional turmoil. So knowing that, that's our breath. We can add another tool to it. And that's basically close your eyes. And on the out breath, 
the same thing. You want everything to disappear. No thoughts, no emotions. You want to rid your body and find a balance and a focus. This also could be done everywhere and anywhere. Well, I wouldn't cross the street and do it, but while you're holding the turnstile, while you're stuck in traffic at a red light, when you hear bad news, when you get into a, a fight or a heated discussion before you're ready to post on Facebook or Twitter. So there you go. You have two little tools to help you. Now, I would teach this to children, and I'm sure as parents, you know your child and you have an idea about the developmental stages of their brains, of their minds. You'll know when to teach them and to go further as my podcast goes further. So again, I'll stress again, doing it as much as possible, as many times a day is important. You want this to be something you do not recognize. It'll be a habit. It'll help you. And I hope make the life a little bit better, even if it's a fraction of a second. And then we build on that. So when you have space or you feel confident, you could be at work, sitting down. None of this is extreme. I'm not going to get into the extremes of meditation or the woo, you're not going to be able to live on sunlight for months at a time. I don't believe in any of that stuff, but I do believe in the science of breathing exercises and a little bit of the philosophy and the psychology of meditation. So we got our breath. We do it everywhere, anywhere. No one has to know. When you can, or if you need to, you close your eyes and on the out breath, You let everything go. Try to maintain a balance. Try to recognize your body becoming neutral, having a focus, and being calm. So if you have room and you have space, you want to sit down. You want to get in a comfortable position. That's fine. You don't have to get into any extreme poses or push yourself in in a strenuous way. But you might want quiet if you can. However, I put this together more for people who are busy, who have very challenging lives, who are are constantly on the move. This doesn't have to be a long, drawn out um, exercise that you will take up too much of your time. And like I said, going back to the beginning with the just a breath. You can do that while you're washing the dishes. When you hear the kids yell your name. You hear the baby crying. So now we're going to sit down, hopefully uh, comfortable. You feel safe. And you have no distractions, or as little as possible. And we want to do the same thing. We want to breathe, close our eyes. And on the out breath, let everything disappear. You can call it the void, emptiness, and you might only recognize it for a fraction of a second. And that's only, that's all you need. The concept, if you understand it, is also important because even if you never succeed, practicing, you are actually helping yourself. So from just a breath to closing your eyes, but you're still on the go, moving around, No one has to notice to sitting down and now taking the time to try to work things out. So we breathe, we empty ourselves, we focus. And from here, you can try a little bit more of an introspective exercise. Something you could look at is what's bothering me? What do I need to deal with? Or just a general, I need to feel cleansed. I need to feel refreshed or energized. And you can move on to the next part of the exercise. To help people at this stage where most people just stop practicing meditation. 
in this day and age, especially in Brooklyn, New York, or major cities, this doesn't seem feasible for people. Sit down, let everything drop away. It doesn't happen. There's too much noise, background noise, and our brains don't shut off. So it's hard, and I understand. But if you practice this in the stages I described, you should get better at it. But you're sitting down, eyes closed, you breathe, breathing. You want everything to drop away and feel a calm, a focus, and a balance. We can then look at a negative aspect of your life. And a good aspect, or negative feelings, positive feelings. Always with the thought that your out-breath, when you want it, is your balance. It is the way you cleanse yourself from being attached to emotions and thoughts that you're sometimes not in you and not that are not in your control. If you want to practice and get a little bit better, you can do certain little tips and tricks. So for instance, most people when they find that emptiness, it breaks eventually. Some people could do it for a fraction of a second. Some people could do it for longer. Some people do it walking around, standing up with their eyes open. I mean, that's how good you can get at it. But I'm going to say that not everybody will be suited for it. So I hope everybody at least tries and sees how they fit in the range of success. So what you can do is you think of a negative aspect. You could put it with an image. You want to hold that image and bear down on it. And imagine moving it around through your body, down through your stomach, to your legs, to your feet, back up to your chest and your hands. And just by listening to the concept and understanding it, you're training parts of your mind. More like muscles or mind muscles. And we do the same thing. We go back to neutral as we breathe on the out breath. And then we could bring an image of something good. Now you could wait till it, your concentration breaks. You can wait till a distraction, a noise, the phone rings. And then you bear down on a thought or in an image. And you again, imagine moving it around. Now, as you practice these things, you're not going to be able to totally control and understand everything quickly and what i mean by that is randomness chaos of our minds are just sometimes too hard to keep a key control of but if you practice it i think you can get a little better at it each time and you can get into more deeper issues and i think the more you practice this you could Build a stopgap or a barrier and a buffer between you and extreme emotions. Stress, anxiety, panic attacks, depression, anger. You could set up your body in time to have these habits. They help you. Nothing is a cure, a pure cure. There's no easy fix. So... Keeping that in mind, you can now look at it as a negative. And I use this because I watch some religious channel playing with people's minds, but they'll ask a question and it'll be, have you ever lied before? Asking yourself that, you want to recognize your body preparing to feel guilt, negative energy, bad feelings, Possibly bad thoughts on when you lied. And these are the things you want to bear down on. Find the truth of it. Don't shy away from it. When you analyze it, you have to also understand how our brains work. So if I were to say, you're a liar, and you admitted to telling a lie, that might seem like the truth. And it might partially be. But if you think about it, what if I asked you, have you ever told the truth? 
You might think, what? Wait, I go through life describing reality for the most part as the truth is as much as I know it. But we tend to do dwell on the bad things and the negative things. Now, this is just an example, but some people would look at it as anger issues and I hit my wife. So you can meditate, practice, and focus on what made you do that action, or what made you lie, what made you feel bad. Try to look at it honestly, as much truth as possible, and then you take it, and when you breathe, you want to let it go. This is where going back to neutral, focused, and being calm is. You cleanse yourself of dealing with the negative emotions, the negative thoughts, the things that we do in life we regret, we have guilt over, the things that make us angry, paranoid, depressed. And we go back to neutral. We find a calmness and a focus. From there, we go to positive. Same concept. Eventually, when you breathe on your out on your out breath, and you have that fraction of a second of nothingness, you're detached from emotion, you're detached from thoughts. When it breaks, you bring an image to mind. Some people use beautiful things or flowers or art. It could be a picture of your child, your nephew, a proud moment in your life. And when you bear down on this thought. An emotion. Recognize your body preparing to be happy. To feel energy positive. You'll in time notice that you'll feel a cascade of energy. The body is actually preparing itself to smile. And in that would be the next tool. When we do deal with our negative emotions, go to neutral. When we go to positive, sometimes you can't get rid of the negative. It sticks around too long. So what we try to do is when we're doing the exercise in the positive, put a smile on your face, turn the corners of your mouth up when you're bearing down on this good thought. Breathe. And recognize your body being happy, preparing to be happy. The feeling of Proud moments, good energy, and you let it build up within you. You then, when you breathe, put a big smile on your face. Show teeth. Force it if you have to. Your body will start to recognize, or you will start to be happy. But you'll recognize it, hopefully. And you'll see that also can improve the cascade effect. You can build levels. You might not be good at it at first. You might find that it's hard. But there's really no excuse to start this from the beginning. And go, okay. Just breathe. That's all I can do. All I could muster today. I gotta do the dishes while the baby's crying. Uh, I just got into an accident. Deep breath in through your nose. Three to five seconds. Light pause, out through your mouth, five to eight seconds, and you don't have to worry if you have breathing problems. The concept is still the same. Slow, deep breath into the nose, out through your mouth, slower than you took it in. Now you have the breathing exercise on the go. You can do it anywhere. No one needs to know. You can close your eyes and try to recognize where everything slips away. And this you also can do holding a turnstile at a red light. And you practice this. These are things I don't think people have an excuse for. Try to get yourself to understand the concept. You can go online. Look up power breath or meditation and breathing. Nothing so far is woo out of the realm, it just gets a little more difficult when we start going into 
sitting down comfortably and analyzing aspects of our life. When you get the first two exercises or tips down, and you're by, you're by yourself, you got comf uh, you're comfortable, safe, and you want to become self-aware, you want to be truthful with yourself till it hurts. These things are not easy. However, I've also used music with this technique. So for instance, it was a song that I used to play for my fiance. I, you know, I'm a horrible singer, but you know, trying to sing it. And when she passed away, I couldn't listen to the song for years. And I used this method as I listened to the song. Songs are very strong that way. I analyzed my feelings and thoughts, let them come to me, and they're so attached to her, my fiance, that they just cause me pain. And I trained myself to put that in the positive, that if the song was going to invoke these emotions, these thoughts, I was going to be in control of them. I would train myself that in time, and to even to right now today, I can listen to the song over and over. It brings me joy. It brings me happiness. But these things are possible. Nothing I don't believe in life is too hard to get through, to get over. You can listen to my first podcast, I Am I. I describe a lot of struggles and tragedies I've been through. And I implore people to practice the first two part of the exercise and these are just tools to use to teach our children to teach your friends this type of exercise and tool could make people more self-aware that they need help and go get it at a therapist a psychologist these type of, this type of tool might help people realize they have an anger problem and in time it could be really helpful nothing is easy i want to stress that again some people just can't get it the way they're wired the social constructs the, the the environment but i think if you practice the breathing the closing your eyes breathing you don't need to delve further unless you want to and it's interest interesting and I advise going online. There are great YouTubers. There's great resources out there that explain cognitive functions in a really interesting way. You have cognitive behavior therapy, many things to help us when you go to your therapist. I believe that this type of tool, these types of tips, will improve our lives in some way, even if it's a fraction, and maybe get us to the position where we're okay with going to a therapist, to a psychologist. People should know that they could get tools at the disposal in desperation. I'm listening to a YouTube channel, someone understands, someone has been through tragedies. How did you get through it? You hear questions like the world today, how do we get here? This, I'm not saying this tip, these tools are the answer, but they're a piece of the puzzle. At a young age and as children, we should be taught to breathe, focus our breath, how to take our mind and calm it. In turn, our bodies become calm. You breathe, you let it out. Let empty yourself. When you have time, you go and you be inward. You become more reflective and understanding of your thoughts. I hope this helps somebody. And if at any time anybody wants to reach out to me, please feel free. I'm on Twitter at Addiction Master here at the Deadly Addictions channel, and even on Facebook. I would 
be a friend to most, if not all, even people I've had debates with or arguments with, even if it's friends or family who have blocked and unfriended me. And even though it might seem there's no hope, there's no help, perhaps someone sends you a link or learns these tips, exercises, and passes them on to you. I wish everybody to have mental health, awareness, and an understanding of their own minds, their own emotions, take control. And I know it won't be easy, but I'll be here. And until next time, take care.